guess that's my signal to get up. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. <coughs> Has everyone met Bob? No. Come here, Bob. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Come here. Come here. <gasps> there you go. He's very friendly. He is not mine. Um, I, I have to return him. <laughs> yes, I saw he was having quite a good time with you guys. Um, so he's my co-speaker today. So you're speaking out there, and I'm speaking up here. Okay? Hee <laughs> hee. Um, good morning. Good morning. Greet each other. Morning, Judy. So this is like, this is an interesting talk today, because it's like there's, yeah. So <laughs> let's just do a 10-second prayer for me right now. <laughs> you got that. Yes, there you go. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs> um, so the title of my talk is, So Now What? So now what? Is it really okay <coughs> to not be okay? What do you think? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm going to show you something, and I want you to just think about what you see. Now, I'm going to come back to this at the end, um, but... Judy, <laughs> I don't know what she's thinking, but she's had a really good time back there. <laughs> Everybody see it? Great. Um, well, you know, they say to talk about, um, you know, what's going on. It's, not, it's, it's um, talk about what you know. So... I think almost everybody here knows that Midnight died. Uh, I don't even know how long ago now. Three weeks? To who cares? <sighs> and I don't have to explain Midnight to you guys, because you guys know. You know, he, you were his family. Um, he was probably connected to as many of you as he was to me, because that's who he was. He was all about showing up and um, saying, hey, I see you. Nobody else in this room might not see you, but I see you. And because I see you, you need to pet me. <laughs> <laughs> you doing a good job, Bob? Are you doing the same thing? <gasps> Very good. Sit. Good boy. There you go. Um, about seven days after <coughs> midnight died, um, I had taken on a new job, <coughs> and I had spent four months uh, kind of locked in a room with uh, my friend Karen, uh, who was training me. This was her job, and she was training me because uh, she was gonna she was gonna retire. But she died. Yeah, like unexpectedly, like right after midnight. And this is Cindy Hensley's mom. So we're both walking around like. <coughs> Are you feeling that heaviness? That, well, this sucks. This really sucks. And of course, I've been thinking about midnight Losing midnight for years, but that final moment, Allison and Dana were with me. I, yeah. Well, yeah. And Bob was home, ready to greet me, right? Hi, buddy. Is my talk that good so far? Awesome. Okay. Has anyone lost someone this year? Raise your hand if you have. Okay. We've got pets, we've got parents, we've got friends. So you know, right, this talk isn't for you. 
you can just like hang out with Bob. Um, this is entitled The Reality of Loss. Here's what I want you to know. This is really as bad as you think. No matter what anyone else says, this sucks. What has happened cannot be made right. What is lost cannot be restored. There's no beauty here inside this central fact. You're in pain and it can't be made better. The reality of grief is far different from what others see from the outside. There is pain in this world that you can't be cheered out of. Whew. Is anyone else looking forward to 2023? <laughs> so when I do this talk today, I'm gonna, it's kinda, I'm gonna bounce back and forth between being the person who's grieving and talking about the friends trying to help uh, people grieve. So, uh, I don't know how many times I have said one of the following sentences. Well, at least you had them as long as you did. <gasps> They're in a better place. You won't always feel this bad. Everything happens for a reason. This is all part of the plan. How old were they? Is this a certain age justifies being able to die? So if you're the person grieving, and I know I saw some other hands go up around here, don't those things just piss you off? <laughs> don't they? Who the hell are you to tell me they're in a better place? They're not in a better place. They're not in a better place until I'm there with them. <laughs> Let's be clear. Um, so here's what I want you to hear about those custom sentences that we all, is don't. Don't say that. Because what you're really <laughs> saying, what you're really doing, is you're trying to dismiss and minimize the extent of that person's grief. Does anybody here want to like shut people down in their most vulnerable place? No. Um, and I've also been said, well, what do you say? <laughs> well, nothing at all works. Just maybe a hug or a handshake or just a I gotcha. But there is one thing that I have found that you can say. Um, and that is, I hope that we can get together so you can tell me stories about your mom, your brother, your dog. Provide a safe space for them to be able to say or cry or do what they need. This isn't about, do you feel like you did a good job? And do you feel like you acknowledged the grief? This isn't about you. It's about the person grieving. So because this is the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living, and I know that none of us want to walk around as a fake person trying to go, oh, Sorry to hear that. How old were they? Just take that. That moment to just be quiet, to send a prayer, and to offer, to offer your ears, to offer to listen. Because when you offer to listen, you're opening up and taking your soul out and letting your soul help to comfort. You're not trying to fix it. You're not trying to mend it. You're not going to get it to go away. Time does not 
erase grief. Is there anybody here who's had their grief erased because it's old? No. Oh, she's having a good time over there. She just knows. Um, so I, have you guys heard of this book? It's okay that you're not okay. This was like a theme for the pandemic. It's okay that you're not okay. And this woman, um, she lost her husband unexpectedly drowned in front of her. So she really, it's a young gal. So, um, how can everything be normal one minute and completely change the next? Because that's grief. We are all one phone call away from being on our knees. Whew. Are you guys having a good time with this talk? I see everybody. Woo! Glad we showed up for this one. Um, so is there any good news? Is there any good news around grief? Yeah. The good news is, is that you as a human get to step up in a different way. You get to show up. in a way that really makes a difference. I was just looking at Allison because she does that for me all the time. Because grief is not a problem to be solved, but it's an experience to be carried. If you have grief and it's unaddressed and unacknowledged, the pain doesn't go away attempts to be heard in any way that it can. And so throw in depression, anxiety, addiction. Addiction shows up next. Brand new Costco pillow. <laughs> Been sleeping a lot? Anybody else grieving? Been sleeping a lot? Yep. <sighs> Our favorite, I, you know, I almost had to fight for this this morning. It was like, you know, how many times have you seen somebody uh, in grief decide that this was the answer? I love this. Uh, I have medications up here because it's another way that we, that we disappear and get away is we self-medicate. And Claire wanted to know what, what medication I was on. <laughs> And I just laughed because these are Midnight's Mids. So I could see her looking at that going, well, why would, <laughs> why would Linda need to be on a dewormer? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> um, but it's so easy to fall into this. Now, I would never fall into Overeating, never, never, anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> no, they're mine, I'm grieving. <laughs> and so, be aware, whether you're the one grieving or you're the one watching, if all of a sudden your friend is like, can we stop at the liquor store? Uh -huh. Or, I got the best snacks from Costco. I did. did you, if you see it, it's called S'mores. It's in the cracker section, and it's, yeah, it's very good. Um, so what can you do? What do you want to do? And so here's what your job is. You don't need solutions, and you don't need to move on. What you need is someone to see your grief. 
to acknowledge it. You need someone to hold your hands while you stand there in blinking horror, staring at the hole that was your life. Some things can not be fixed. They can only be carried. And so our job is spiritually aware, soaked in prayer. Our job is to be the witness. Our job is to, is to not try and fix or change or mend, but just to be there. Do not get into the, well, you should hear about my aunt who died in this manner. Or, oh man, yeah, I know what you're feeling. My goldfish died uh, 12 years ago. Still hard to get over. Don't get into the competition of who has had the most grief. Don't get into the competition of my grief is so much worse than yours. Because what you're basically saying here is, again, Ye, what you're going through doesn't count. Or better than that, what you're going through scares me so much that I can't show up for you. Um, so as a person who wants to support someone, you know, take time to reflect on what you really believe. And make sure that what you're really believing or you're trying to help does not conflict with where that person is on their road of grief. Um, make a safe space for, for them to ask for what they need. And I've got to tell you, they're not going to know what they're going to need. They're just, they're just not. you just not. This is the story of Bob. So Bob belongs. Hi, Bob. Hi. Hi, yes. He belongs to my neighbor. Right? And this neighbor doesn't come to this church. She doesn't know what I believe. She doesn't. But this neighbor, for the first two weeks after midnight died, would text or call me at 7.30 in the morning to say, we're going for a walk. We'll meet you on the street. Like, okay, I've just had a night, and I'm still in bed. Okay? But guess who got up at 7.30 in the morning to walk Bob? Yes, it was me, wasn't it? It was me because we're buddies, right? Do you notice that my voice changes? <laughs> do you notice that I suddenly become a lot lighter? And do you notice it's all about Bob, isn't it? Isn't it? It's all about Bob. So I'm taking note to myself that Bob makes me smile. Hi. Hi. And that even if it's just for a moment, <laughs> um, I'm not in the middle of my grief. I'm smiling. I'm petting. Uh, who's been walking with me? Claire, you've been walking with me. Allison, you've been walking with me. I feel so set, Susan. I'm chasing dogs down the trails. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Ah, uh, can I give your dog a treat? Sit. There you go. Um, thank you. You almost took that off. So what do I know about myself? When I'm around a dog, I'm lighter. So what makes you smile when you're in grief? Do you know? Huh? Petting. Petting, yeah. Does anybody, you know, when you're in it and you're sunk, do you know yourself well enough to know what will bring you comfort? Do you? We're all going to have to face it at some point. Um, so I know that Bob <laughs> brings me and Bob's back there going, I am not running up there to get my treat today, Linda. <laughs> okay, Bob, you don't have to. Um, 
So you take notes. And if you're the friend, you might want to take those same notes. My friend laughed or smiled when we did X. Maybe my la friend laughed when we went to an amazing play. Maybe my friend uh, laughed and looked at the ceiling when I told her she had to move a four drawer filing cabinet <laughs> up a flight of stairs. <laughs> what is it? What is it? <laughs> what are they? What, <laughs> did you come up with something? <laughs> That's a spiritual principle now. If you are in grief, call Bob. Why don't we, why don't we all do that? Bob! <laughs> Bob's back there. He doesn't know what to do. He's like, yeah, oh, Bob, you don't know what to do, do you? Look at you. You're wagging your tail. You don't know what's going on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I am God, Bob. Yeah, I am God. Yeah. So uh, you never know who's going to show up at the door, though. Why are you crying? I know you want more treats. So here's, here's for the friends and the family. Being brave is standing at the edge of the abyss that just opened in someone's life and not turning away from it. Not covering your own discomfort with... Think positive. Being brave is letting pain unfurl and take up all the space that it needs. Being brave is listening to that story. It's terrifying and it's beautiful. But those are our stories. <laughs> he is going to be so impossible when I take him home. <laughs> I was talking to Marin Brown, and we were talking about grief, and she said, Linda, make sure. Hi, Marin. Um, make sure you tell them to take the small wins. I'm like, what are, the, what are you talking about, the small wins? She said, when you're in grief, you don't, oh gosh, you know, it's December, isn't it? Yay! I get to do grief during the holidays! Woohoo! I may not put up a Christmas tree this year, but maybe I'm going to open up a Chris Christmas card and tape it to my door. I may or may not get presents for people. They may or may not show up wrapped. But those are the small wins. I woke up this morning. Bob took me for a walk. And I smiled at a Christmas card. Because that's, right now, that's my reality. I'm like, it's so strange. I'm walking around crying at headlights driving down the street and just like all of a sudden, you know how that motion just takes, takes over? Has anyone had that happen where you're just like, oh, this is a really nice apple. <laughs> oh my God, you know. Just be there. Just be in it. If you're the friend, be there too. Right, Bob? Hi. How can you not smile at that? Hi. 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 My friend also, Holly, she basically has given me carte blanche with her dog. <laughs> She's like, you just let me know when you need Bob. Just, just let me know. And so what an incredible gift. Who in your life knows you that well, that knows I, there's nothing I can do for you? But here, have a dog. <laughs> Hi. And, you know, and I appreciate everybody who sent me pictures of dogs and have told me to get a dog and you need to get another dog. And, and that's in the works at some point. Uh, midnight is actually in charge of that. So every day I open the door. <laughs> 30 
We're not here yet, Midnight. What are you bringing me? So in closing, let's go back to that. Okay, what do you see? An opening? A black hole. A black hole. What else do you see? Blank space. White space. What else do you see? Aaron. Hi. A black dot. <laughs> a black dot. Could also be kind of a musical note. Oh, that's cool. What else do you see? Ooh. Yeah. Anybody else see anything? Dog's nose. All of us concentrated mostly on the black. Who said white space? Okay, you're advanced. You can go home. Yeah. So we all concentrated on this, right? We didn't concentrate on all of the space, the majority of this piece of paper. We didn't concentrate on this. We concentrated on the black hole, the negative, the, yeah, it could be, it could be, but for the most part, we forget. We're so focused. We're so focused on the black that we forget that there's all this white space. I'm going to ask the choir to come on up here. I asked them to, to play with me today. <laughs> you know, being a part of this church is so much fun. People like, do what you ask them without really a big explanation. <laughs> so what do you guys see? Dog team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good, a dog team. Who said? Connection. 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 Does everybody agree with that? They're connected? And so this is what I want you to remember about grief, is that no matter where you are, if you've just got the phone call or it's a year down the road and you're celebrating the anniversary, we're all connected. Now, if Jessica were to walk towards Aaron, go ahead. What happens? I'm going the wrong way. She's <laughs> pulling. She stops, and then if Claire comes and wants to come talk to me, <laughs> so will you be somebody who's connected to me during this time of grief? Yes. Are you able to be there for me like this? Yes. Okay, I'm about to lose it. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> so be this during grief. Be that connection to help pull that person. Don't try and change me. Don't try and fix it. Don't try and make it better. Just by being here, just by standing here with me, just by saying, OK, yeah. String, you want us to tie each <laughs> other up? OK. Be that person in grief, because that's all you need to be. That's all you have to bring to the table. Can you do that? Can you? See some people going, ah, you. grief's not my thing. But all you have to do is listen. That's all you have to do. Thank you, choir. <laughs> Let's give them a round of hands. So I know this talk is a bit, uh, I know this talk is a bit disjointed and it's not flowing or whatever, but that's grief. That's my grief. Um, it just bounces around and I don't know where I'm going to be in the next two or three minutes, but I do have one more quote. Because you know what grief is? 
Anybody know what grief is? Grief is a part of love. Your love for life, your love for self, your love for others. What are you, what are you living, painful as it is, is love. And love is really hard and excruciating at times. Thank you. Thank for you for giving me the space to talk today. Thank you for your smiling faces. And thank you for being the people who I'm attached to that I don't have to explain anything to. Give yourselves a round of applause, please. So we're going to transition into prayer right now, knowing that um, what we know within this space is that there's only one power in the universe, and that power is spirit. That power is the universe. Um, and there's never a minute or a moment or a place where you are not connected. There's never a minute, a moment, a place where the universe has given up on you and said goodbye. As a matter of fact, I think if you look really hard, uh, in your darkest of moments, you'll find that God is sitting there with you. So knowing that to be absolutely true, that there's absolutely nothing that needs to be found, uh, fixed, mended, or taken care of in my relationship with the universe, that all I have to do is sit there and simply <sighs> release what doesn't serve me. I release the never-ending anger that accompanies grief. I release not being able to ask or even know what I need. Because all I need to do is to be. And so if you're facing some other challenge, maybe a, a job, maybe a relationship, maybe you're in the same boat I am today where you're, you've lost something that just makes your breath be taken away. A lot of people don't have the most fun during the holiday season, so let's just release any expectation of how we're to show up or how someone else is supposed to show up for us during this holiday season. Because it's about love. It's about love and it's about life and it's about how you walk through it. Prayer is the answer. Your friends are the answer. And maybe your dog is the cherry on top of it all. So we simply, we give thanks even in these times, even at our worst, we give thanks and we stand in gratitude. You know, I had the best dog on the planet for 17 years. And as much hell as I'm going through right now, I would not change that 17 years. I would not change that. So I'm grateful. Thank you. I take this emotion, I take this feeling, I take your emotions, I take your feelings, I take whatever is heavy on your heart, whatever burden that you are dealing with today, and I just release it to the working of the law, who's like, okay, we're on it, we're on it. You are loved, you are loved. Whew. And so now, as I just let this be, I ask you to help me anchor this by saying, and so it is. <laughs>